Hi guys, in this video I want to talk to you about Schelling and Hegel. Okay, well, um, these days uh, Hegel is really, really famous. Um, you know, there is a lot of people interested in Hegel. You know, there are many PhDs being written about him. Um, you know, a lot of YouTube videos about Hegel too. And uh, Schelling gets very little academic attention these days. However, Schelling is really, really important, uh, you know, when it comes to understanding Hegel. And in this video, I want to uh, talk to you about, um, you know, what uh, Hegel thought about Schelling and why um, their relationship um, went sour, essentially. Um, uh, Schelling and Hegel differed personally, you know, to a great extent, okay, um, you know, just their academic um, pathways were very different. Um, Schelling was this um, child prodigy, essentially, um, you know, he already became a professor at 23, you know, he wrote, um, you know, an absolute philosophical masterpiece when he was just 26, you know, and Hegel, when he was in his early 30s, he was just getting started. So, from the beginning, um, you know, Schelling was kind of like this early, you know, kind of child superstar, which, you know, kind of, you know, burnt out. And um, Hegel was, uh, you know, kind of a late bloomer, you can say. So in this regard, you know, they differ. Um, you know, so when Schelling, you know, was getting all this attention, you know, like, oh, man, you know, this young genius... You know, Hegel was, um, you know, kind of more humble, you know, and Hegel was just doing his thing and, you know, Schelling was, um, you know, enjoying his fame, you could say. And uh, as a, you know, perhaps consequence, um, you know, it, it's probably the case that Schelling was kind of looking down on Hegel to some extent. Um, by the way, um, it's kind of cool, you know, Schelling is the only German idealist of whom we have a photograph, you know, because, uh, you know, Kant, Schopenhauer, well, actually Schopenhauer too, but I don't really classify him as a German idealist. You know, for me, German idealists are Kant, Fichte, Schelling, and Hegel. Um, uh, you know, Schopenhauer is kind of this uh, heretic who, you know, does not really belong here in this you know, specific classification. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, like that's, you know, a picture of Schelling as an old man, you know, like looks like this, uh, you know, old sage, um, you know, this really old genius, uh, you know, really interesting picture. Um, like if you just look at Schelling as a, you know, relatively young man, like I don't know how old he is in this picture, but, you know, I, I would say like mid 40s or, you know, late 30s, I don't know. Um, Hard to say, but uh, if you just look at him, like like he looks like a king, okay? You know, he looks, like, you know, like he, he has this majesty, you know. And by the way, I'm not like, uh, you know, kind of trying to, you know, make a personal statement about him. You know, it's uh, I'm just, uh, you, you know, giving you the background, you know, and this will be important uh, for understanding what I have to say next. So. Schelling's first, you know, text was, you know, his first, uh, you know, full book and his most famous one was Phenomenology of Spirit. And in Phenomenology of Spirit, um, Hegel criticizes Schelling implicitly. Okay, um, so in the next video, we'll continue this.